look forward to hearing from everybody again this coming week. It's the Sports Zone. And it's kickoff time to start the second half. This will come to the 45-yard line. This is the result of the penalty that was assessed against Brother Rice at the end of the first Whoa. half. Look out. Jennings with the return from the 24-yard line is where Brother Rice will start it in the third quarter. Their offense is led by quarterback Matt Kelly. He has had a rough go of it tonight thanks to the Romeoville defense. Sam Mathis, their tailback, is everything we had heard about. And he is a player much like Dan Simic that Mac is very capable of bursting through that eight-man front and going the distance. And, I, and the only person back there I think who can, can catch him is, is uh, Ryan out there on the corner. But they have the wind to the back. They've got to, if they ain't going to throw the ball, they better get it up now before that rain comes in. Oh, got Kelly option nice this move. time. He keeps it. Oh. Arm tackles. Well, Matt Kelly will take it out to the 45. And we saw that in the first half. When you arm tackle the Brother Rice runners, they just run right through you. And that time, the gallon perimeter, the outside end missed him. They thought he was going to pitch. Watch again as Kelly takes that ball. Matt Kelly, good size, 6'3", 190. Tall, lanky kid's got that long stride. Fakes to the fullback, a terrible fake, but he just puts the ball in missed tackle. Another missed tackle, another missed tackle. And you've got to grab onto that big rascal because he's going to make good yardage. He is 6'3 and 190, and he just picked up 21 yards to open up the second half. Tailback is Mathis. Good feet. He should have been down. He stumbled on the wet turf and still got five yards. Well, you're talking about energized. Whatever Coach Bill Gleason said in his locker room on the grass out here, he's got these guys fired up, and they're coming out of that huddle with smoke in their eyes, and they moved the ball twice for good yardage on Romeoville. Last year, Romeoville traveled up to Stevenson, lost to Stevenson 26-25 in a heartbreaking game, a fumble on the goal line late in that game. And they're involved in another close one here in the opening 6A playoffs this year. Spartans, the smallest 6A school. There's that option again. Oh, he was going. He wanted to pitch it oh, then. Oh, my goodness. If he'd have done that, that would have been going someplace else because number 23, Maurice Owens, was right there on Mathis that time. I guess if you're going to be a, an option quarterback, you got to dare. you got to be a daredevil and just say, hey, sometimes you're just going to throw it up for grabs. We did a good job of tucking that ball in. Kevin Olson, a 6'185 pound junior. Gain of only a yard, and it is now third down and four. The Spartan 49. <laughs> Mathis off tackle. Here he comes. Nice move. Hit once, hit twice, down he goes. A loss on the play. Ryan Stanich will finish it off. He was hit by Chris Mooney. And also Maurice Owens. First man, though, number 90, Sean Galloway, shot the seam that time, made him bounce around, and had to change, change his direction, and the rest of the troops came in to bring him down for no gain and forcing a punt. Mooney leaves the field hobbling. And watch Galloway again, not very big, but great speed. Watch your team, number 90, there he is there. He misses the tackle, but he slows him up so the rest of them can rope tie him. So one long run by Kelly, and that's oh. it. Oh, there's the high snap. snap. Gallagher trying to make something out of nothing, and he does the wise thing. The best he could do is throw an incomplete pass, and that will give Romeo the ball, fill the ball at midfield. And once again, we remind you that this has not been an uncommon occurrence for Brother Rice. In back-to-back -back game against Bishop McNamara, Mount Carmel, there were three bad snaps to Gallagher. Two of them resulted in safeties, and that one will put Romeoville in great field position. Again, a great break for Romeoville, but the smartness of Gallagher, he got, got, out, got around the rim and threw the ball, so that's the incomplete pass. The ball goes back to the line of scrimmage. The key thing, though, is Romeoville has possession in midfield. Leading six to nothing. Field position so very important here in the third quarter. Oh! Five-yard pickup from Simic, and his feet were flying through that hole. And that was the best run we've seen besides his long run, and that he, like you say, he was flying for those five yards. And it looked like the Ville is pumped up again. They're beating their helmets and getting all, getting jacked up out there. Well, they've been on a mission this year. Watch the left side of the line just explode, and there's his feet. Look at him. He's just, he's just driving through there right at Carroll. 
second and five from the Crusader 45. Uh, Jezolowski the keeper. Oh. Jezolowski first throw. Look out. Nobody will catch Matt Jezolowski. It's like a time bomb ready to go off. <laughs> well, you're talking about Mr. Excitement. That's Matt Jezolowski. And you see why he has 14 rushing touchdowns. He made the fake again. We said they had Arna Bernowski. Carroll came up, smashed Bernowski to the ground, but Bernowski didn't have the ball. Yeah. Nope, number 14 had the ball. When he turned the corner, you see how happy he is, jumping for joy. He just got on that sideline, and nobody was going to touch Matt Jeselowski. Jeselowski's 15th rushing touchdown of the year gives Romeoville the 12 to nothing lead. Eight minutes and six seconds to play in the third quarter, and the Spartans will go for two. I think we'd probably want to run a similar play. Wait for that. And that two point conversion run will fail. So 12 to nothing, the score. Matt Jezolowski, he just kind of lulls you to sleep, right? I'll give it to Bernaski. No, <laughs> I'll give it to Simic. Wait a minute, it's my turn. I think I'll keep this one myself. Carpeville. You don't know who's got the ball. Look at that, nobody even, they were looking back in the backfield when he, when he took his head up the hill. 12 to nothing, Spartan. Rice fan right now to get something going on this particular drive. You only had 31 yards of total offense in the first half, and right now with they even set to go into third quarter, you're trailing by two touchdowns. And if you don't score here, that means you're going to have to change your offense and throw the ball, which you don't do very well. Dave? Okay, thanks, Lee, and they have the win at their back here in this quarter. And they will start from about the 34-yard line. On the return was the fullback. You don't see too many fullbacks Returning kickoffs with that kickoff short, so Bob Jennings will take it up. And now we'll see those navy blue clad Spartans dig in on the defensive side, pitching a shutout here tonight for about two and a half quarters. Like Lee said, if they don't get something started quick, they don't throw the ball well, and if they turn around and Romeoville gets out of this court, that means they're uh, both, uh, Brother Rice is going to be thrown into a win. It looks like about 25 miles an hour down that field. He's going to throw this time. Well, he will keep. Matt Kelly, again, oh, arm oh. tackles. But, you know, that was not an arm tackle. Sean Galloway. <laughs> Galloway knows how to stick his shoulder in there. That's the second or third time we've seen him missed by the uh, defensive man. Now, again, because of the slippery turf, and he makes a good move inside. But they try to play fake, and Romanville's just not going for it. He fakes to the fullback and try to boot, and Romanville said, no way. Watch the missed tackle there. But there's Galloway, he makes sure he brings you down. It's a 70 yard pickup for Kelly. Make it second and a short four. Option there's left that, side. He's, he's got some room out there. Sam Mathis looking to turn the corner. Mathis at midfield will be driven down. And once again, Sean Galloway, every single play you see number 90 involved. Well, they've got to get on that perimeter more often because that looked like Romeoville was out man that time as nobody can. Might have been a, a clip back there on number 23. But see, Kelly comes down. He gives it away right now. There's nobody. Watch right here in the corner. Yeah, that was a clip block back there. It wasn't called. But again, there was nobody outside besides the defensive end who had the quarterback. It's a first down from the 49, just shy of midfield. Come back this side, runner. Oh, he's going to throw it. Time on the run. It's picked again. Ryan Taylor once again, his second interception of the night. His 12th of the year. His coach says this guy has to be an all-stater, and he's showing why here tonight in the playoffs. Well, it, at least he's all Romeo, but there's a flag on that play. They've got a personal foul. As a quarterback really got his, uh, his head lifted off the ground that time. But Ryan Taylor is a, is a gamer, and he's all over that field. We see Kelly on the replay. He drops back again. He has some time on this one. But he throws it up for grabs, and who comes across in there on the pick? And there's Taylor. Look how tough he is. It's tough to bring him down as he dances out of bounds. Possession, Romeoville now. There was no way Steve Flaherty was going to out wrestle him for that ball. Oh, 
play here is first and 25. Okay, well you get all the explanation right there that you don't get in the NFL and games. Well, right. you found out that he pushed him after the whistle. And that was nice of Bill Wiggins. He says, what did he do? And the referee says, well, he pushed him. He held on to him long. He kept pushing him well after the play. Back in the second quarter, Brother Rice was driving. That's when Kelly once again would drop back to pass. And who was at the end of this one? Ryan Taylor. That was his first. We just saw his second. And Romeoville will have to start back deep in their own territory. At about the 12-yard line following this penalty. It's first and 25. And now Brother Rice, you know, they get a little feeling down here. You know, maybe our defense has to do something to make something happen. Well, they've got to get angry. They sit on the sideline there for a while, and their defense coordinator, I saw him huddle them up and just yelling at those guys. He knows for them to score, they've got to make something happen down deep in Romeoville's territory and give that ball to their offense where they can make some short gains for a touchdown. They can't drive for a long length of time on Romeoville. You see the rain coming down much, much heavier now. Time for the David Copperville show. Oh, instead, right up the middle, Bernaski is spun down. Well, he ran the wrong hole that time. He did a <laughs> cutback. I mean, you, you talk about he made a judgment call. He cut back to his right. The hole was up the middle, and I think they'll tell him that, tell him that whoever's coming from the sideline. But when you're running through all that uh, that traffic in there, you have to make split section decisions. The gain is to the 16. Third and 20. Important third down because you're going to kick in that rain and Brother Rice has almost blocked three punts. See the offensive philosophy here. Up 12 to nothing. Here comes Jeslowski. They got him this time. Brought down very nicely by Brian Tracy. And to me, this may, Dave, this may be the key play of this half in Brother Rice. If Brother Rice doesn't do something to get a short kick, they're gonna be in big trouble. I think they've gotta really try to block this kick with an all-out effort. And we see they're just, this time, they're not gonna let Jeslowski go. They'd rather have him pitch that ball than have him keep it. Let's see what happens on this one. Pressure will be on Rondell Hill, the snapper, and the punter, Reggie Denard. Kicking in the rain and the wind. Oh, delay a game. And that would be five more yards. Boy. Yeah, I like that. Now you're back at the 10. You're really, you're making it bad for yourself, and this is where the breaks start to happen. That's a lot more pressure. Now he's in the end zone with that ball he's got to catch. Very important man you're looking at right there. And we see the coaches in the press box are standing up to the they're a little nervous about this play good snap nice catch Denard nice kick takes a Romeoville hop and this is not half bad out to the 41 yard line that's a 31 yard kick in tough conditions and Reggie Denard did a great or Denard did a great job of getting that ball out without having a mishandle and putting him up near midfield okay Mac you said you thought that may have been the most important I, play it works out for the Spartans, but right now this would be the most important drive of the game for Brother Rice. I was right, the, the most important drive because this wind is really blowing. The rain is getting sitting and watching. Well, he just concentrates in there. That's an excellent job. Jeremiah Desco, number 24, had blocked two punts in a game earlier this season. He was right there. Kelly, yeah, option right side. Mathis He's makes something out of nothing. Wow. Oh, late hit. That's a Boy, that was mm. terrible. That's going to hurt Romeo Bill. He may get tossed out of the game for that one. Somebody came in the pile, whether it was number 26 from Brother Rice. But it looked like it was a dark jersey that came in and just plastered somebody. And the flag started flying. This might be the play. Depends on which way he's going to go with it. You got a dead ball foul. Uh-oh. Against the Ville, and that's going to hurt. Let's take a look. It'll be a 15-yard walk-off. And only the effort of Sam Mathis what a run sustain this one. This is probably the most exciting no-game penalty run we've seen in a long time. Look at that young man run. Stay up. And watch here. All of a sudden, bang! There he is. Out of nowhere. Just a, just a little over 
enthusiasm. We'll see a ground level camera here and watch again. We see some coming. Oh, uh, you're way late. That's enthusiasm, one thing, but you got to be careful out there on that field. This ball is now at the 23 yard line of Romeoville. Still three minutes to play in the third quarter. Brother Rice uh, on the pitch to Mathis. Shea Poe will string this one out. You cannot tackle Mathis up high with arms. And he's one of the best backs we've seen out there on the perimeter on that on the outside. We've saw Marcus Smith, the, the big strong back, and Jeslowski and Bernowski and some of the other guys in here. But Mathis is a true gamer who runs extremely hard and he gets better. He looks like he's a mutter. Mm -hmm. In the wet ground, his little feet just keep turning. And watch again, he just makes you miss and he just runs through the lines. Doesn't look like he's making much, but once they put the stick down, he makes six, seven yards. So what he got on that play. Second down and four. And they give it to the money man, Mathis again. He will get to the 15. You can run from Galloway, but you can't hide. And that's what it is. They're trying to get away from Galloway, but that time he came backside through the outside linebacker or inside linebacker out and came in and pulled him down from behind. But again, they're driving the ball. It's a steady rain. There's plenty of time in this game. You got two minutes, 45 in the third in a whole fourth quarter. And number 54 comes out of the game limping again. Chris Mooney has left a couple of times in that state. Now we see his ankle has been wrapped up over and he hurts. Remember, he's an offensive blocker also. Crusaders need two yards on third down. Mathis again. Nice play. Boy. He, he was grabbed around the ankles that time by Andy Knapp, who would not let go. And Brother Rice will be faced with a fourth and about a yard. And we hadn't heard from Andy Knapp all night, offensively and defensively, but he comes up with the big play. And that's another two-way performer there. They've been controlling him. We see a down lineman right off the nose, and there he comes right in the pitch, and nobody blocked him. They just miscounted that time. And we see Bill Winkie's don the old baseball cap. Fourth down. A short two. Inside the 15-yard line of Romeoville. They better come with that option again. Look where he threw it. Just threw it up for grab. Spartans will get possession. You put the pressure on the quarterback, and he makes a mistake. Now if you watch this replay, this happened at the line of scrimmage. Somebody jammed the guard and the fullback back into the backfield, and Matt Kelly had no time. Watch again. There it is right there. He had no, no room to, to roam there. And you saw number 40 was draped all over his back, Bobby Irvin. And he calls that. He had to throw it. He had to throw it. Let's take it down to the field now and our sideline man, Lee Turnbow. Thanks, Dave. The weather conditions are really deteriorating rapidly here. The field is very slick. A minute and a half left to go in the third quarter. Romeoville, a big play on fourth down here. Must have a ball control drive here. Keep it out of Brother Rex's hands. And they'll be working pretty much into that rain and wind. And there's the give. And again, out to about the 25. Nice quick five, six yards to Dan Simic. Well, they changed their offense around. They put Simic at fullback and number 45, Reggie Gennard at full or tailback. Bernowski wasn't in on that set. And his quickness, you see Simic's great quickness. His feet's moving. And if he doesn't get knocked down there, he goes again for some good yardage. Well, one thing Bill Winkie likes about being able to do that with Simic in the fullback and alternate is it gives the defense a, a different type of timing to work with. And Simic's a good straight ahead runner too. Here he comes, oh, he gives it to the fullback. This is, oh, he gets smacked. Reggie Denard will go down, hit at the line. And that may be the last play in the third quarter. Oh, have some good tackling on that play as Carroll and, and Lunsford made a good job of stopping Denard on that play. Reggie Denard, of course, is a flanker. He gets the carry here, and on the season, Denard has carried 32 times for 250 yards and five touchdowns. And Jezolowski will just check back on that clock and let it run out. We have played three quarters through an opening round Class 6A game in the IHSA State Playoffs, and the Romeoville Spartans lead Brother Rice 12 to nothing in our Channel 15 High School Game of the Week. Romeoville High School, I'm Dave Bernhardt, along with Mac McLaughlin and Lee Turnbow. 12 to nothing, Romeoville 12 minutes away from a chance to move on to the state playoffs, something they have not done since 1988. Bill Winkie's first year was the last time Romeoville has won a state playoff game. 
We start the fourth quarter with Jezolowski on the sneak. And I don't know that he got the first down. It will be tough to tell. Well, this guy's using his left foot mark that time. This is near the 30, and they will have to measure this one. Romeoville, their playoff history, four and six overall. They were two and one in 1988, Bill Winkie's first year. And again, last year, we mentioned that devastating 26-25 loss to Stevenson, and they would love to hop on the buses and head down to either Pekin or Moline to play in the second round. Well, I think that'll be an interesting game. That'll be a long trip for the Bills. They have to go, but I'm sure they enjoyed it. They'll enjoy going down there, and that'll be a tough game for them on uh, enemy turf. But the key for this game is keep the intensity up and don't relax, because with a slippery ball, it doesn't take much for it to lay right. down. Somebody can scoop that baby up, and and with uh, Sam Mapp is back there, you don't want him having the ball too many times in, in any territory. First down for the Spartans. They have whatever wind advantage there is right now to their backs. The wind again across Breeze. Oh. Jezolowski, the pitch. Nice hit. And that was an interesting pitch. Denard takes a pretty good hit and goes down as we get a little extra pushing and shoving going on. And Number 40, that, yeah. Mike Lunsford was there. Well, he's a football player. I mean, Joe Carroll is the, the guy that came in with the big stats at, at linebacker, but Lunsford has been all over the field. We see a late pitch. Nice ride to Simic that time. Took it out. Made a late pitch there and boom, right on the pads that time. Denard didn't like that hit either. Still got himself about five yards, maybe six, second and four. But I'm surprised Bernowski didn't come back in after the quarter. Simic is the fullback, Denard is the tailback. Oh, nice move again. Simic with the carry, and now the Spartans starting to get him in chunks of five. And that's the key. The clock is on your side. Just don't do anything silly now. Put two hands on the ball. Run that ball at him and make him make tackles and just chew the clock up after time after time. And look at that. Two hands wrapped around the ball. Simic uh, doing an excellent job. He has that 88-yard touchdown run. It came with 431 to play in the first half. That opened up our scoring. And then with 8.06 to play in the third quarter, Matt Jezolowski on the option keeper, 45 yards. Both times the extra points or miss the first time by kick, the second time by run. It's a 12 to nothing Romeoville lead with 10 and a half minutes to play here in the game. Ronowski's back in the game. There he is. There's your five, six yards here. They will give him forward progress on the dive out to the 47, a seven yard pickup. Good move by Podersky. He can let uh, Ronowski look at the holes and let somebody else run and see how the holes are. This time Actually, he kept that, his head straight ahead. That is Simic still in the ball game. Boy, Dan Simic looks so much like. Oh, yeah, a couple of fours <laughs> on the end of their jersey. Yeah. He's moving so fast. <laughs> Maybe starting to wear Brother Rice down here a little bit. Second and three. Well, keep a good thing. Wow. Yeah, not that time. Nick Jones was there. He closed the door in a hurry on Simic. Well, you can run it only so many times, and that time they were waiting for him. And big Nick Jones, 51. Just stood up everybody and got right in his face for, for no gain. Watch again the down play here. They tried to make a little trap block, but Nick Jones didn't go for it that time. The trap man got uh, slipped down, and Jones was standing in the hole. So in terms of number of plays, this drive that Romeoville is on right now, the couple of pay plays will match their longest drive of the night. Their longest drive was nine plays. They turned it over on downs. That was way back in the first quarter. Their two touchdowns have been big plays, 88 and 45 yards. They write it on through, and this is another big play. Inside the 25-yard line, Dan Simic to the 23. 30-yard run for Simic. Good run outside. I'd be interested if we could find out and see if Bernowski's injured or he's just sitting on the sideline sitting this out, but right now he's not needed. As we see Dan Simic again hit, hit off tackle. Great blocking by Mooney and the bunch and Knapp. And he's carefree for about 15 yards. One man just runs him over. First man that touched him, Mac, was 30 yards down the field. Yeah. Look at this huge hole, the offensive line. He just goes right there. There's nobody there. And he just runs over the only man between him and the goal line. And you hear the offensive coordinator tell him to take their time out there. 
They're trying to move the ball when in about 15 seconds, he said take about 20 seconds to get the snap off so the clock is always running. Now again, here at Romeoville and in most high school stadiums, you do not have that play clock where the quarterback can look right into it and time it. Right. So you have to get some help from the sidelines on that. Fresh set of downs here for Romeoville at the 23. And they came out of that hole within five seconds after he went in. <laughs> Hear the pads popping inside. Now you take a look at the, the body language a little bit of Romeo or of the Brother Rice Crusaders, and they just don't have that pop that they had in the first quarter. I don't think they feel too good about what's happening right now with eight minutes well, left. That offensive line is just coming at you, coming at you. You've been on the field a lot out there, and you've taken some big hits, and it just wears you down, especially with the mud, and then you're down 12 nothing. You know you got to make something happen, and they're big players. Joe Carroll, he hasn't made the big play that they need to turn this ball game around for Brother Rice. They will pitch it to Denard. Slips one tackle, gets up to the 20, a gain of three. Romeoville has taken this ball from their own 18 and have just methodically marched it down the field. 30-yard run for Simic. And Bill Winky has to like the looks of what's happening here. Well, Denard, you see, it doesn't have very many fancy moves there, but he turns it on real good and makes two or three yards. But again, uh, he's better as a receiver, and, and Simic is a better tailback, I think, at that position. But for some reason, Bernowski hasn't been in the ball game this quarter. Might be in there now. Is that him in there now? With all the rain we got. Jeselowski to throw. throw. Oh. Look at this, touchdown. Oh, brother. Touchdown. Sometimes it's your night. Ryan Taylor in the right place at the right time. And Jeslowski took a lick right in the chops after he threw that ball with a late hit. And there's another Brother Rice uh, player down in midfield. But Ryan Taylor makes an outstanding focus on the ball. That ball just a tip drill bounced up and there was Ryan Taylor on his knees and the ball right in his hands. Well, how many tip passes have we seen tonight where people have had the opportunity and it came maybe when you would have least suspected it. Jezolowski to throw? Yes. And Taylor is there. He's yeah. caught three passes tonight. Two of them have been interceptions. And you never under underestimate Jimmy Bredersky because if you say, hey, time possession, time <laughs> possession, you hear him yelling, take your time, come out of the hole. The guy comes out in five seconds, what does he do? He throws the ball. 18 to nothing, Romeoville. They will go for a pair. Another late hit. That was another one. I'll tell you what, they're picking on Jeslowski, and he's a feisty little guy, and he's not going to take it. That play, or that drive, 82 yards in 11 plays. And it's culminated in Ryan Taylor being behind the secondary, and Matt Jezolowski just, I guess, throwing the ball hard enough to get it deflected. See all the breathing down there with the cold wind. Watch him throw it just as he gets in. There's a tip, and there he is, <laughs> diving catch. He's good at that. He likes to, he's a mutter to sliding in the mud and making those diving catches. Well, with 6.55, the trail looks kind of dismal for Brother Rice. Ah, but one guy that's not dismal, part of our Channel 15 crew, is our big guy in the field, Lee. You know, I'm not dismal, and you know why? Uh, no. Because who had Dan Simic in the, in the top jocks? Who's having a hell of a game? I gave who took you a it break. all the way down I there? I gave you a and break. You got the oh, thanks, Mick. All right. <laughs> Where are you going? There it is. There's our top jacks. This I, game's not over yet. It is. And what's he talking about? Where's hey, find out what about Bernowski. Where is Rich Bernowski? <laughs> Could you leave? Give us a chance. I'd like to know my pick to click. Where did he go? <laughs> You know, and it's a lot more fun in these kind of weather conditions when you're winning. And the fans here on the near side certainly enjoying the turn of events here. Romeville swover, smothering Brother Rice on the special teams, and Crusaders will have it about the 35-yard line, and boy, they are up against it here. And you know who got it from that pile, Lippy? Number 47. He was down, the first man down, and got smashed in there. And he came up gimping there. You can't afford to get him nicked up on that corner. 
Matt Kelly will work for the shotgun. Nobody covered. They had, they had nobody out here. They had twin coverage. They only had one man out. They didn't recognize it. You heard the defensive coaches up here next to me yelling at him. Couldn't yell, yell loud enough to get it down to Winky to tell him. Brendan Lyons with the catch. He will pick up about nine. Second and short. Brother Rice will go with the no huddle. And they just aren't ready for it because jumping across the line was Lyons. Now the question is, was the ball ready for play? Well, they know they've got to throw the ball and they've gone to uh, double slots on both sides. Shotgun formation. Joe Lombardo saying, oh, try it that spot right there. It's a little wet there. That's the time remaining in the fourth quarter. The opening round 6A game, Romeoville 18 0 lead. Oh, nice clip. Kelly has room. He's going to get smacked. Nice running. First down for Matt Kelly out to about the 49. Well, now you know he's going to pass, so that just makes you want to drop back those seven men and rush four and just cover the zones. And he's got to put the ball in the end zone uh, three times to get back in this game. Matt Kelly about six minutes away from wrapping up his high school football career. Things look good for Romeoville. Looks like uh, this field will not have to be used next week. The score holds up. Spartans will be either in Moline or Beacon and then of course hope to have another home game farther down the road. Oh, Kelly will flare it out. And into Romeoville territory they go. Could have been a pick on that. They had a linebacker sitting right in that zone. He just missed it. Looked like Sean Galloway just went right around it. And we will remind you that, of course, we will be covering high school football here on Channel 15 next week. Tune into the Sports Zone. Once we see what happens in this week's playoff games, we'll let you know our coverage plans. Boy, Taylor might have got another pick on that. There's a flag on the play on that mm. as he went into a crowd of white jerseys over there. You know, the one thing Romeville needs to do right now is, is walk away. Yeah, and get Ryan Taylor out of the game. You watch him. I was watching him all the way on that time. We see Winky calling a timeout. I think he's got that idea, too, to get yep. some of those guys out of there because he's going to need them. We see Kelly going back to throw and watch Taylor come out of nowhere again right there. And, oh, they might get him for a late hit. Yep. On the reception was Pete Foster. And this, of course, will move the ball down the field. And they're trying to they're trying to get Ryan Taylor out of the game because he's he's really hot. And you remember, if you get thrown out of a ball game, right. you don't play the next week. I think Winky's going to tell him that face to face. Oh, <laughs> uh, you have to love those fans yeah. in the stands. You know who else you have to love, Mac? <laughs> you have to love our cameraman. Oh yeah. My goodness, oh. what a fabulous job they do, folks. I don't know if you realize this. They set up in this weather here tonight. Sam Cellino and Dave Gerzedich on top of the press box, exposed to the elements. Tony Micheletto is in our bucket truck in the south end zone. It has to be a wonderful night for Tony out there. <laughs> yeah, we're near the power lights, too. <laughs> oh, oh, you can hear those babies sizzle uh, on the field. We have, There's Tony. Hey, Leo, hey, help you come up, baby. down. Atta, right. Stick it out, you yeah. St. Rita grid. You. Hey, St. Rita, oh, wow. <laughs> hey, who knows? Maybe these two teams are, maybe we see St. Rita down the road. Okay, there's, there's Sam, and, Sam and Dave. <laughs> Very comfortable looking. Sam was offering those windbreakers, uh, those rain jackets to everybody. And on the field, we have Bill Law and Mark Battaglia running the show down there. And again, let's see if we can find those guys. There they are. Hey, boy, Mark. Hey. Or is it Bill? Or Mark, Bill. See, and look, the guy to the left with the umbrella, that's Lee. <laughs> hey, we, honest to goodness, we certainly appreciate your efforts. And I know you people at home do as well with all the positive comments we've had here in our sports coverage on Channel 15. Well, following the penalty, Kelly will go to the air once again, and he's looking for six. Will not be as on the coverage was Dan Jordan, backup quarterback, and now also in the secondary. Hey, remind you, coming up on the sports zone, not only will we be telling you our coverage plans for next week, but Joe Hendrickson, the editor and publisher, of the Prep Gridiron Report will be along to join us as well, and we will be ready for your phone calls. Folks, you want to talk state playoffs, this is the man you want to talk to. We'll talk about from the northern part of the state to the southern part. We can zero in in our area as well, so jump on those phones. A lot of those great callers we had last week. You can 
much, much more coming up on The Zone this Wednesday. Kelly again. Running away from Bobby Irvin. Oh, oh, oh. I would not want to be Matt Kelly right no, now. No, he's, he's labeled it. He's a marked man. He's running out of frustration and throwing out of desperation back there. As those uh, dark jerseys are all over him. Bobby Irvin has nine sacks, number 40 on the year. Didn't get one that time, but might as well have been. And he's just backpedaling to try and save himself there. He's got no protection and just throws it up for grabs. Also in the face once again was Andy Knapp. He's getting sacked this time. No, no he's he not. Away. He's going to get a first down at least. Kelly takes a hit and stays uh -oh. on his feet. He's going Matt in. Kelly touchdown. Oh, wow. 5-10 to go. Let's mark that down. That's a 23-yard touchdown run for Matt Kelly. And Bill Winky does not like the tackling on that one. And there's great concern on his face because he knows he's got Ryan Taylor here on the sideline. He's been looked at by the trainer. And that was his spot where Ryan's usually had to come up and knock him out of the box when they get down that field. So there is com some concern on the, the Wink's face because the onside kick will be coming up after this two-point try. The lead is cut now to 18-6. The Crusaders for two. There's going to be a... Missed him again. Zembrowski misses. Wide open. Oh. There's a two-point conversion pass to the tight end, Barton. Brian Barton, folks, this ball game is 18 to eight. And Bill Winky just ruined his brand new hat as he slammed it to the ground. As you can see the look on his face, he, he, he's not only concerned, but I think he's, uh, he's telling people that you need to tackle out there. The game is not over till it's over. <laughs> you know, one thing about Bill, you just never can tell what he's thinking. <laughs> you know, you just you try to always guess what that guy's emotions are. Well, sometimes sometime he gets excited and you can't tell what he's going to say out there. But <laughs> oh, we like him but here he's at in 15. The ball game. Yeah, he does a great oh, job. I love this. I mean, intense, yeah. Mr. Intensity right there, and the kids love him. And he tell, he's telling them right. If you're going to win a state championship, you got to take it one step at a time. You know, and some, I'm going to tell you what, Mac, I really, really like this because some people will say, oh, you know, what's he doing yelling at kids? But you know what? Bill Winkie gets out there in the trenches with these kids day after day after day. He gives every single ounce of it. And when things don't go exactly according to what, you know, they've worked on. He lets them know. Sure. They had an interesting, and, and, not to cut you up, but Crohanan from Richards had an interesting article about what he does for his team. I think if they did, if they scripted Bill Winkie, he not only runs with him, but lifts with him, but he's right in it. He may chew him up, but I'll tell you what, he can hug him and bring him back, and that's the type of coach he is. And you know what? His team is 8-1 and one right now and still a 10-point lead with 5 minutes and 10 seconds left. They're that far away from moving on to the state playoffs. I suggest Bill lose a few pounds because his heart rate has got to be going sky high. <laughs> we'll try to get a word with Here Bill Winky after this one. Here comes an onside kick attempt. Uh-oh. And that went far enough. They got it. Now they're going to give it back to the Ville on that one. Didn't go 10 yards. It didn't take that one extra hop. And we will go Romeoville side, and we will go down to Lee Turnbow. Thanks, Dave. Uh, Ryan Taylor, the cornerback for Romeoville, was ticking off. He's had some kind of a hip pointer, a hip bruiser, taking a look at him on the sideline. They don't know if he's going to go back in the ball game or not, but it looked like he was trying to flex his right hip, something in that area. Thank you very much. Of course, Lee is down there on the field, and again, we admire his efforts as well. That will give us a chance to take a quick break here with 5.09 to play. Romeoville, 18-8 over Brother Rice. Inside the 10. Well, he's the glue that kept them together today with his fine running, and we saw it demonstrated again on that. Big first down play, and Simic just takes it right down the field and puts it goal to goal for the Spartans. You get a look at Ryan Taylor. He has two interceptions tonight and a touchdown catch. Just, just good quickness. We watch on the play. He gets the ball from the high back position and just goes and makes a nice juke and just gets good yardage. And this time, Bernowski is back in the game, or was back in the game on that play. Bernowski is the fullback on this play. Simic the tail. 
Nice cutback. Jezolowski keeps it. Oh, look out. Dances. Get down. And he's close. Inside the five. The key right now is get out of this game without getting nicked up. Because if you're going to advance in the state playoffs, you've got to be healthy. And you've got to have depth. Thank goodness we don't have those uh, two games a week like we used to have Wednesday, Saturday games and Wednesday, Friday. We see he takes it out. It looks like he might want to throw that ball. He puts it down and he gets his head down and makes about two or three yards. Second down goal from the two. Leading 18 to eight. Oh. The sneak from Jezolowski. A little bit of extra pushing and shoving. And in the meantime, it's a touchdown, Romeoville. I and mean, everybody's looking back from uh, the play in the backfield. They didn't watch <laughs> what was going on in the end zone. That was the important thing, that the score was being made. Matt Jesolowski, second touchdown of the evening, is 16th of the season. And Romeoville answers in a span of less than two minutes. And they're going to call a timeout. Looks like they're going to go for two again. There it is. 24 to wait. Romeoville with 3.20 left. And again, the onside kick did not work. Simic a big run. Jezolowski, touchdown. And Ryan Taylor looks awful lonely sitting on that bench by himself, and he's... Uh, He's a major, major piece of the puzzle that, uh, that they're going to need next week at Pekin or Moline. And uh, I'm sure as soon as they get off the field, they'll start medicating, getting him some, uh, trying to get him healthy right now. Let's take a look one more time at our top jocks this evening. I think we're just about ready to decide this one. Again, before each game, Lee Mack and I pick who we think will be the player of the game. And the, basically the rules here are uh, which of those three players do we think had the best game? There may be somebody along the way that doesn't. And uh, Mac, uh, Rich Bernowski has had a great season. I don't think tonight's his night. Jezolowski has a pair of scores. We know what. I think I'm going to have to give it to Dan Simic. I'll hold my vote. No, Dan Simic. <laughs> Lee gets his third win of the year. Nice going, Lee. Steve Jobin. The attempt in the extra point is good. And Jobin drives this one through and it is now 25 to 8. And Spartan fans can breathe a little bit easier. 3.20 to play. It's a 17-point Romeoville lead over Brother Rice. Sometimes the easiest plays are just as effective as 88-yard runs. Jezolowski, <laughs> a little sneak. And that counts the same as Simic's 88-yard run as Jezolowski's 45-yard run. As Ryan Taylor's 20-yard pass from Jezolowski, it all adds up to 25 points. In interesting play with the the head judge came down and talked to Bill Winky and he went to the other side. He's cautioning his players, telling them to you know, watch his players and don't get too hyper out there because of that rule. There's a little bit, a little action back and forth on both sides, pushing and shoving. As we see a little animosity, Brother Ross is, is no, they're out of, they're out of this now. And you got to keep cool heads out there on both sides. Again, many different options as to coverage of games that we could have next week. Of course, it all depends on games that are being played tonight. Of course, other area teams involved in the playoffs. Lincoln Way is in Naperville North, also in Class 6A. In 5A, Bolingbrook will be home in a Saturday afternoon game hosting Rockford Guilford. That'll be a tough one for the Brook, but after that, maybe, maybe a chance to move on. If we take a look at the upper bracket, the upper bracket of our area team's brackets in 6A, you see Romeoville Brother Rice will face either Moline or Pekin. That will be an interesting game. I assume it is raining down in Pekin <laughs> as well tonight. And in 4A, we have Joliet Catholic Academy in action against Mundelein Carmel and New Lenox Providence on Saturday evening against Rich East. Get it! Get out! Room to run for Mathis. Oh. And you take more than one guy to hit him, and the second man to clean up is Jesse Rimes. Number 34 finished him off. Well, they're still hitting down there. One of the great things about high school football is, you know, you, there are so many teams, you don't get a chance to see every team as you would in professional football or to some extent college football. And sometimes there's players that just jump up and make you take notice. And 
Sam Mathis is one of those for Brother Rice. I agree. I think he's played an outstanding ball game, and he can play in anybody's backfield. A long pass again. He's wide open. Kelly threw that one a long way. This ball is all the way down near the 20-yard line, and he was under pressure. That's about a 60-yard throw in amazing weather conditions. And, and you're in a prevent defense, and they're throwing over your head. <laughs> And that's pretty good. You see Kelly got time that time and just stepped up in the pocket. Oh, he had a lot of people around, threw it flat-footed that deep. He's behind his man. You know, Kelly has thrown for 500 yards and eight touchdowns, but with his size and the way he throws the ball, you'd have to think that you know, maybe he should have been throwing a little bit more. Yeah. But this time he will run. Got to get out of bounds. There you go. Stops the clock inside the 45-yard line. Well, you can see the pass defense without uh, the big guy in there. It, it, it really, it really kind of hurts him because of the pass rush and Ryan Taylor sitting on the bench. And Bill Winkie's still not satisfied, up 25 to eight. He doesn't want him to score again. You know, he can run the option on this one. Enough for the first down at about the 47. Clock will stop momentarily to reset the chains. And give credit to Brother Rice. They come in at 7-2, and, and Coach Bill Gleason has done an outstanding job with his players also getting this far in the season. Bad snap. Oh, he's going to throw this one a country mile. Throwing it up for grabs. It's getting a little crazy here in the final three minutes. I think the last three minutes probably is going to take more than the first <laughs> two and three quarters. <laughs> Romeoville, once again, a 6A school this year. A lot of people thought it was uh, almost a shoe in to be 5A, but a lot of larger schools lost, including Homewood, Flossmoor, and Thornwood. They would have pushed them into 5A, but here in a game that was considered to be, you know, one of the top games in is why we covered it right here on Channel 15. Romeoville is probably dominated about as much as this scoreboard would indicate at 25 to 8. Exactly, and that again showed the strength of the area and uh, area teams that we have, and Brother Rice is no slouch. They play no. an outstanding Catholic league. They were four and one in that league, and seven and two overall. Beat some good teams, lost to some good teams. So man, that schedule was awful tough. And here comes Mathis, heading for that sideline. Good job of stopping the clock, and he gets wound up and caught up in the headsets down there. Romeoville's only loss of the season. You were here with us in Romeoville. Boy, that seems like a long time ago, doesn't it? When they fell to Thornton by a score of 43 to six. We had so many high, ex so much high expectations for Romeoville. Thornton played a near perfect game. They have not duplicated that effort this season. And as Bill Winkie and his players will tell you, that game kind of woke them up. Since then, Spartans eight in a row. They are working on nine and have just two minutes and 25 seconds to kill here in order to pull that off. From the 40 yard line. Kelly looking to make something happen and he makes the completion happen at about the 23 yard line. He gets it to Buddy Gallagher. He doubles as a punter and a backup wide receiver. Nice tackle by Ryan Swans. They're gonna give him that ball in front of him. But they're gonna try and keep him in bounds to try and end this game and get it over with. Again, everybody talks about that prevent defense. That Kelly's looking to exploit it here. A little pump fake into the end zone. I is out of bounds. Well, if he'd have ran that time, he could have ran in the end zone. There was nobody on the corner. Everybody had fallen back. Good stop by number 20, Eric Mays, to get back that deep. As uh, Coach Winkie has gone to move in several people, new people in that secondary. And they're awful tired. They're running 40-yard sprints every play now. It's the longest drive possession-wise tonight for Brother Rice, and it nearly results in six here. Mays the breakup. Oh. Another, uh-oh, look out. Bobby Irvin from the backside. Rice will take a timeout. Well, they keep coming and coming and coming. I, I, you know, I give credit to Brother Rice, and that defense has really got to be dog tired when they come off the field. Another bad snap. The ball's getting wet and slippery on the ground. And we've seen number four, Bobby Irvin, again, making another sack as he's done throughout the year. 
with the Spartans. You know, let's recap, Mac, the situation here. Brother Rice, seven and two. You mentioned, you know, the, the teams they lose to, St. Rita and Mount Carmel, no, no to anything to be ashamed of no, there. absolutely. They come in here averaging almost 22 points a game. They've scored one touchdown tonight. And that was on a 23-yard run from Kelly. That was with 5'10 to play here in the fourth quarter, and that was only about three minutes ago. It seems like about an hour and a half ago. But uh, this Romeoville defense who, if there was a question mark, I guess it would come from their defense is been well prepared and right. they have executed tonight. Well, you know, and you, right, you're right. That's the question mark. Are they big enough to go down the line, you know, game after game and do 14 ball games? That's a lot of ball games. Kelly looking to do it on his own. He has one touchdown run tonight, and he's where, inside the 10. Where was this in the first half? Of course, now you didn't have a prevent defense and guys dropping back 20 yards, but uh, he's making a good effort there to keep the. Keep it interesting. You see, nobody's there to contain him. Galloway's there, but he just dances by Sean that time. Well, if there is something that Bill Winky will be able to get on in the films, it will be some of the tackling efforts. And again, it's uh, not great field conditions to be able to pull that off. It'd be interesting. It's a timeout. Now, Bill Winky, if you look, if we had a camera again on, or oh, you thought it was a timeout, he was halfway <laughs> in midfield. And then all of a sudden he came back. He had the look on his face in the march that he was going in that huddle until these guys have finished this up. 25 to 8 is the score. That's the time remaining in the game. And Rice is on the move. They've used the clock very nicely here. They've taken it from their own 36. Used about a minute and a half. Oh, another missed snap. He's got, oh, he dropped it again. Well, he, I think he was trying to make it look like a pass. The ball went forward. That will stop the clock. You know, and Romeoville fans, again, you'll want to join us on the Sports Zone this week. We talk about Joe Hendrickson and in his latest issue of the Prep Gridiron Report. So Joe uh, hmm, kind of likes the looks of our area, specifically Romeoville and Bolingbrook. So we'll talk to Joe about that coming up on the Sports Zone this week, coming your way live at 6.30. More of those Romeoville guys better call in because the Bolingbrook guys were all over the phone last week. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of, uh, but there are a lot of Romeoville High yes, School fans are. in Bolingbrook. <laughs> yes, they are. I could tell where whose school they were rooting yeah. for. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly day. dancing. Yeah, he's got his man. Oh wow! Nice job by Matt Kelly. The touchdown reception goes to Sam Mathis with a minute 33 left. An eight-yard touchdown pass. And Winky just slammed his cap again as he had an interesting conversation with the head judge about something. Well, that brings the score 25-14 with a minute 33 left. You know what this game reminds me of, Mac? It reminds me when we were here a little over a month ago with Bolingbroke when right. Romeoville dominated the game, right. and then it, it just kind of came down to this. All right. And again, another onside kick and some mishap, and I think it's in the back of Bill Winky's mind. He doesn't want another Stevenson. He wants to get away, <laughs> get the, the, the monkey off his back, like he said, and get to the next round. Once again, going for two. They converted the last time. Boy, he's not this one. one. The score will remain 25-14 with 90 seconds left. And basically all the Spartans need to do is pick up an onside kick here and run out the clock. Well, I think Jimmy Bredersky, who I think has done a great job of bringing this team out in the second half, well, we see Ryan Taylor going off, and they're going to get him into the locker room, get him warm early, and try to get something on that hip. Boy, he's a valuable commodity. They need him 100%, but this is the time of year you're going to get nicked and bruised up. It's a long season, and state champions, they have to have depth and get the injuries. The least amount of injuries are going to be the uh, one big uh, plus for you when you're trying to go all the way. One thing about Taylor is he does not leave the field. No. And I think Bill Wickey hit it on, on, on correct. He should go berserk because this young man is a legitimate All-State candidate. Uh, Sam Mathis has done a lot of things for Brother Rice tonight. One of the things he hasn't done is catch the pass. But he saved it for a minute 33 to play. And again, give a lot of credit here to Matt Kelly. He's worked hard on this yep. drive. Another interesting onside kick here. <laughs> Buddy Gallagher has it teed up. 
coming back. They'll try side. this side again. It didn't go 10. It went out of bounds. Went out of bounds. Oh, I tell you, anything can go wrong. And that's, you can't get the onside kick 10 yards, even get, get a chance to pick it up. And I believe Brother Rice is out of timeout, so Jeslowski can put the knee down after one play and just run that clock out. Spartans will come to the line. They have scored 25 points tonight. The offensive line has done once again a fabulous job. Dan Simic has had an outstanding game here tonight. And Jezolowski has run the offense once again to near perfection. Simic again, Dan Simic. <laughs> Look at this. He will go all the way. Boy, that's mud in your face right there. Oh, man. Well, if you're going to score on me, I'm going to score on you. Simic, a 50-yard touchdown run. But he has a touchdown tonight from 88 yards, and this one from 50. And you file this tape away at home, Dan, and you save it for your grandkids. You're not kidding, because this is a highlight clip here. Look at that. Just one little juke move, and there he goes. Nobody can catch him. But you know he scored too fast. <laughs> Ah, yes, he did. 225, 11 minutes ago, we had 225 on the clock. <laughs> we have 122, and they got the ball again. So that means there's another 11 minutes before we get this game over. <laughs> it's uh -huh. 31 to 14 right now. I'm not in a hurry to get it over with, but you know, that's what happens in ball games like this where they throw the ball 6,000 times, it seems like. We've had 33 points scored here in this period, if my calculations are correct. Spartans for two. And Rich Bernaski will have it. 33 to 14, Romeoville the lead. And we have the opportunity now to run back down to the field. Hey, we're still down here, Dave. And the thing is, Romeoville's wrapped this one up here tonight. They're going to play the winner of Moline Pekin. Figures to be Pekin. Not a lot of people from around here know much about Pekin, but what they did last year when they came up here, they played Thornwood, and they lost. They like to throw the ball a lot. It'll be a lot of wide-open offense. So if you're a Romeoville fan, you go down there, you're going to be in for a ping-pong battle, probably a 40, 45-point you know, point ball game. And all the fans from Romeoville, we're lined up to get our tickets right now, Dave. Look at these guys. We're ready for our tickets, buddy. We're going down to Pekin. <laughs> you better now, get out of the way. I was say, now, <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> okay. Those guys may be going to Pekin. Lee, I can't tell you where we're going yet. We don't know yet. And you're going to go wherever Mac and I go. Oh, well, nice hair. In the zone. Nice hair. I'll tell you He's what, that zone. guy is a zone man right there. <laughs> I used to have hair like that, too. Jeez. <laughs> oh. You know, you, you see that picture there. As we look at the brackets, we see the picture of the students, and you know that's what these playoffs are all about. So there you see it. Okay, if Moline Pekin, if that thing advances, now hovering in the bracket just above, you have Sandberg and Thornton, those two teams playing tonight. That one, when we've seen uh, Thornton, of course, twice, once right here against Romeoville, and don't you think the Spartans wouldn't like another shot at the Wildcats? Yeah. This has been a 35-point fourth quarter, 21 points from Romeoville, 14 from Brother Rice. And we're not done yet. We still have a minute 22 to play. This one's going to go out of bounds. That means the clock doesn't start. There's still 122 <laughs> on the clock. And as the more, I want it to be interesting, Lee, to be in that crowd when those fans rush on the field and have a mud bath out there trying to get on top of the players. Oh, Bill Winky has his way. I think he just soon, like you say, keep yeah. everybody healthy. Let's get him yeah. in and let's get ready to look at some films. He hasn't stopped coaching yet, though. He's on the sideline, he and Jimmy and Podersky and their uh, special team coach are just, they're just rattling off a mile. I mean, they must be horse after every football game. I'll start from a 35-yard line. Oh, here he goes again. Nice job, and did he get out of bounds? Nope. No, he didn't. Matt Kelly has had a nice game, but it's all come a little bit too late. We see the athletic ability from Kelly and from Sam Mathis. Well, they got 12 men on the field. He can't get off. 
<laughs> and they didn't spot it. Here's number 20 coming out of bounds over here. He might as well have stayed on there. Oh, well, this was thrown into the Romeoville <laughs> fans. <laughs> It'll take a while to get that ball back. Winky put in a substitute on the far side of the field, a cornerback. He's racing up the field. He didn't get past the, the midfield. And the guy threw the ball up, and the referees didn't even count. <laughs> And there's no instant replay for him to, to use the cameras. <laughs> well, this type of ball game, you just want to, I think the referees, they, they also, they want to just get this over with. Look at this. They know what happens in games like this when you got things going. Get that whistle and get out of here. Side just threw his uh, flag because one of the receivers was about five yards, lined up about five yards off sides. And this shouldn't take away from, from the job that Romeoville has done tonight. We had a great first half of, off, of defense by both sides, and then all of a sudden they put it together with the long runs by Simic and just turned this ball game into an upside-down score. Kelly will find his man out there. And I believe that is his fullback, Bob Jennings, as the... Uniforms obviously becoming a little bit muddy on us here. And a player down for Brother Rice. You know, make no mistake about it here tonight, Mac. Uh, no matter what the score is, people at the game, people who have been watching this game know that Romeoville's dominated this one. Uh, you know, Brother Rice, as we mentioned, coming out of the Catholic League and the Spartans, I think uh, Bill winky has been looking for some respect in a lot of quarters. You've got to figure this uh, this game and the reports in this game will certainly boost that. You're right. Uh, they've really demonstrated again that uh, I think he was a little irked that uh, Bolingbrook was ahead of them in some of the polls if you're going to be a poll watcher. And Bill made a statement about that. But this will indicate that they'll move up in it. But if Bolingbrook wins, Bolingbrook again is, you know, is doing a good job of, of winning also. But Romeoville is legit. And they have a real possibility of getting out of their bracket. And hopefully this young man We'll be able to get up and uh, it doesn't look like it, but uh, boy, things go bad for you when when you're down. You know, you think there are 42 seconds left and you know, of course we have no idea the extent of the entry nor really who the player is right there, but you think, oh brother, you know, you play an entire season and then all of a sudden something in the last minute of your last game and you might have to hobble around a little bit here for the first part of the winter. You know what those guys right there in those blue jerseys? Matt Jezolowski, guess what, kiddo? You get to play again next week. I don't think that helmet fits him, though. Is that his helmet? <laughs> Holy cow. I mean, look at that. And he's a quarterback. He's got enough Spartans up there on his head, but he's got a size eight bucket. That, that could fit Lee. That could fit Lee right there. He's got a six and a quarter with an eight bucket on top. Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Matt, what a great story for Matt Jezolowski. Unfortunately, a great story. His father passed away earlier this season, the week before the Stag game. That was the third game of the season. And Matt Jezolowski, all he did in the Stag game was rush 17 times for 208 yards and score three touchdowns and dedicated that win to the memory of his father. Well, you know, the human interest stories we get from high school, and those come up, and it, it's a fact of life that things happen. As you see the young man on the field, they're, they're, they're sitting for an ambulance. But Matt Jeslowski is another story with how our kids overcome uh, tragedies, and, and they have to grow up real fast out there, not only as football players, but as young men. The reports we get right now is they will have to bring an ambulance here to Romeoville High School to carry off the injured player. That's the time remaining, that's the fourth quarter, that's the score, the Spartans just counting it down to that advancement into the 6A playoffs. You know where you are? You just stepped into the zone. Welcome back to Romeoville High School. Final 42 seconds of this opening round 6A playoff game is all of a sudden becomes somewhat sullen here. It's, uh, we have an injured player down. Lee Turnbow is right down there. We'll wait till uh, Lee gets report and he'll be back with us. We're still not sure exactly who that player is that's down and we don't want to speculate on anything. Lee will have a report for us in a little bit. Let's take a look while we have the opportunity though as these playoffs 
move on what lo looks like in class 4A. Of course, we have two area teams involved, Joliet Catholic in action tonight against Carmel. And Mac, if you take a look at that second round potential matchup oh, should oh, JCA oh. advance, Richards and Joliet Catholic, that would be a good one. That was a good one. And Richards is on a crusade as he's been knocked out uh, the last couple of years. And, and Catholic's got a tough first game. Carmel, 14-6. Yes. They've my brother was telling me they got some outstanding running backs over there, and they got out of there by the, the you know, a great uh, goal line stand. So it would be interesting the next, and you know, with, I didn't believe Whitgrove was going to play. Now he's playing. Yeah. Uh, the quarterback is, is fine. So uh, it's going to be a tough role for, for Catholic High to come out of this bracket. Now, if Joliet Catholic should win that ball game against Carmel and Richards advances, that would certainly be one of the games that we would be considering doing uh, the Hilltopper is over at Richards and we remember being over there in Oakland yes. uh, last year. Yeah, a great ball game and uh, good facilities to be at and, and watch and Corrana does a good job with his kid and, and uh, he's not he's not looking past Calumet but Calumet is not in Richards ball in ballpark. Another good team up above was Oswego as we take a look in the 4A bracket and the word we get in the press box is Morris has already beaten Manuka tonight as they would have expected to do Morris of course we saw them earlier in the year against Lamont, a perfect 9-0. and They've thrown seven shutouts on the season. Then we look down the bottom bracket, and Providence Catholic, if you look at the pairings and matchups, they got themselves a pretty nice draw there. Yes, they do. I, I, look, I hope Piatone uh, gets past Centennial. I like to see the little guys against the Giants. Uh -huh. That would be a very interesting game there. You know, and Matt Sempner would like that uh, as well, because <laughs> what that would mean is he would get to uh, host the next yes, game rather yes. than traveling down right. to Champaign right. and play Centennial. And in that top bracket, uh, now... Kankakee and TF South also playing tonight, and of course, Morris uh, would be favored over TF South or Kankakee, but TF South has some fine players too. Yeah. And, and now let me ask you, Mick, uh, head, former head coach, if you play a schedule like Morris's all year and you've played it to domination, to a level of domination, do you have doubts in your mind as to whether you really can play with the big boys? No. No, no. not at all. You win. Okay. You build, you build that up in your heart and your mind that you can win. I don't care if you're playing the Little Sisters of the Poor. You knock them out of the box, and that truth the schedule means nothing because you get beat up beating guys or playing against guys who are bigger and tougher than you are. Okay, a good 4A bracket, and we understand that Lee Turnbow has gotten a report from on the field. Lee, what's going on? Thanks, Dave. The ambulance is starting to come in here into the field. Uh, the injured person, uh, the player for Brother Rice, is number 65, Brian McGarry. Um, he has a neck injury. Um, he has some tingling in his legs and his arms. Talked to one of the Brother Rice coaches. He says they're going to take him off in the ambulance, you know, for precautionary measures. He does have feeling in his legs. It is, again, some kind of neck injury. You want to speculate on it, how serious it is. But the trainers are right there. They've immobilized his head, and they're going to take him away on the ambulance. What, uh, Lee, what's uh, Brian's mood or condition right now? I, I, you know, he, he seems to be very calm. You know, his parents that came down from the field, and they're right next to him, along with the Brother Rice coaches. And it, it's kind of a downer way for Brother Rice to end this ball game. But... Uh, he had movement in his legs. Again, they're going to take him off on the ambulance for uh, precautionary uh, x-rays. Lee, have they said anything might uh, in this game and just say, hey, let's call the game I haven't talked to the referees. Uh, athletic director uh, Danny Schley is down there on the field. The ambulance, again, is starting to come around the field. So uh, looks like what we'll do is we'll take him off on the field, take him to the hospital for a precautionary measure, and then take a couple snaps and this ball game will be over. Brian McGarry is a 6'4", 220-pound senior. You know, the thing that's... You, as we look down there with Brian, the thing that you can just kind of see what, again, what high school's about, and for that matter, all athletics. You take a look at that Brother Rice sideline, okay? They are not standing around and just sitting on the bench waiting. They're just kind of milling around, no real purpose to what they're doing, just very concerned for Brian. And there they are, you see that. Uh, well, it's, you're in a double shot situation. You know you've lost this ball game. And then you see one of your, your, your ball players, a senior out there, and, and gets hit and hurt with seconds to go. And, and you think about the ambulance and the words of that and all that. You get a little anxiety going on now because the ambulance is having a problem getting through the parking lot. You know, and that kind of builds up. You got mom and dad and an injured player, and his concern comes first, not the football game. That's over with. For Romeoville High School, we have 42 seconds to play in this opening round game, and Romeoville the 33-14 win, and this is not how you like to close it out with flashing lights. Oh yeah, all smiles here as far as that score goes. For number 52, Andy Knapp, and also for number 23, Maurice Owens. Hi guys, you're on 15, you know it. That's right. 
Nice hair. It looks like Lee's hair. <laughs> Lee, look at you. You got a beard and a bald head. That's you. Hey, Lee. hey, hey. Let's not be talking about bald <laughs> okay. heads. All right, all right. Yeah, that's good. Right. That's a good look. <laughs> yeah, Andy Knapp, hey, he had quite a ball game here tonight. Uh, Knapp involved on several plays on that defensive side. He, on the offensive part, he's done all right for himself as well, too. Knapp, a right tackle, 6'2", 230-pound senior, an all-conference member. Five all-conference players on the Romeoville offense. Matt Jezolowski, Reggie Denard, Keith Olson, Chris Mooney, and Andy Knapp as we look down at Brian McGarry. And, and Bill Winky did something. He went in the stands and got his wife, who is a nurse, who's worked in emergency rooms and had, had some experience, and she's out in the field with him, talking with uh, some of the officials to see if she could be of some aid if necessary. Just like ER, just like ER. Well, you, you, know, just, as, you just don't like to see no, it. No, as know. a head coach, I've been through and as coaching wrestling in, in, in the last 30 right. years, I've had incidents where this has happened to one of my ball players. And I'll tell you what, it just it just takes the importance of the game right away. And and the great concern is the health and care of that young man uh, out there on that field. And you want to give him every opportunity you can and give him the best care. And you know, there's a fellow there from Brother Rice that is uh, telling our cameraman to move out of the way. And uh, I wish people would understand sometimes the roles that we take here. Uh, the idea is not to get our cameraman in there for exploitative purposes, but maybe to translate a little bit of information and concern and care to our viewers at home. And you see the stress and emotion on both sides is as Bill knows that, uh, again, he's concerned also. He knows what, what happens. He's had some of his players go through this. And well, you know, you hear about the coaches have retired, and I spoke with Gordy Gillespie at length uh, upon Gordy's retirement. And um, the moments that he will not miss oh, yes. in coaching are the injuries. And Man. so many coaches will say that is the part that hurts more than anything else through a coaching career, is seeing kids go down and get hurt. You live with it. I mean, it, it, they become part of you so much that uh, you hurt when they hurt, and it, and it takes a lot out of you. You know, Mac, uh, as we see this, and obviously, you know, it's a very important moment. I am, I am a little bit surprised with the score of 33-14 and 42 seconds left. I know it's yeah. a state playoff game, and I, I know the, you know, the overall implications. I'm a little bit surprised that the officials did not just wave everybody off and said, "Hey, guys, you know, let's just." call tonight I, I would I would I agree with you I think in, in all practicality these kids have been sitting on the sideline now about 15 minutes uh, in this cold driving wind and you say well all you have to do is take snaps with to alleviate the injuries let's get off the field I think brother rice will will concede that they <clears throat> have played a ball game they've gotten beaten by a better team tonight uh, just go in the locker room and, and regroup and and get this young man uh, uh, to the hospital and uh, start uh, building for next year yeah, and I think what you know what we will probably see. My guess is what we would see is once play resumes, it will be two snaps, put a knee down, and you know let's just leave. I, I really doubt that Brother Rice will say, hey, let's you know let's go out and try to score three times here in the yeah. final 42 seconds. I would hope so, it's, uh, for their sake and the fans' sake. And we've had some good fans. They've stand, stood here for this length of time and waiting for this ball game to end. Well, Romeoville will win their ninth game in a row. And again, it was a long time ago. It was nice and warm down at the end of August when they lost to Thornton 43 to 6. And that was a little bit of a spanking that the Spartans took to heart. And all they have done is run roughshod through their next nine opponents. Uh, two close ball games. One of them, somewhat of a, uh, I guess, a miraculous game. 41 40 win over Andrew in their uh, fourth game of the season. And of course, we were here for that Bolingbroke game as well. And that was a, a great one. And. Uh, Hopefully for Romeoville, there'll be several great ones coming ahead here in 1995. And one of the concerns that Bill Winkie will probably have is defensively, is that they they have been scored on in the, thir the third and fourth quarter. And sometimes they're up in the ball. We saw it against Bolingbroke. We saw here a couple of times that, Bo that Brother Rice has come back. We saw it to Andrew where they had to really play to come back and beat them. And there you see our coverage schedule in terms of the dates involved. Of course, uh, you can play either on Friday nights or Saturday afternoons. And of course, our coverage is uh, contingent on who wins and who advances on through. 
And we've got some teams that could go away, as we've talked about them tonight. Providence, Bolingbrook, Joliet Catholic Academy. We don't have any scores involving those teams. Lincoln Way playing tonight in Naperville North. We do feel pretty good about Romeoville moving on. <laughs> yeah. And again, you know, we've kind of made it a habit here, Mac, haven't we, on Channel 15, of making sure we take a team all the way down to the state finals. We've yeah. done it in football and basketball the last several years. Yeah, you know, and that's, you're right. Ever since I've been on the on the broadcast, is that we've gone right to the, one of our teams in the area have done, has done that. and. Maybe one day they'll just let us do the final game also. <laughs> <laughs> and really good some, put some excitement. <laughs> Let's take a look once again at that 6A bracket, the uh, upper bracket involving our area teams. Lincoln Way, of course, the number six seed against Naperville North. Chicago Vocational is undefeated. Naperville Central sitting in that top uh, number one spot. And, Mac, I know uh, Naperville North streaming like a shot at Naperville Central. And you heard one of our callers, Mike from uh, Bolingbrook, giving us a call this past week on the sports zone, and he says, forget it, don't even worry about it. Uh, nobody's going to beat Naperville Central. Well, uh, Naperville Central's got Downers Grove in that bracket, and they always have a tough game with the, with the Downers team. One interesting is Lake Forest with uh, Bobby Douglas mm -hmm. on the quarterback. Um, Wayne Douglas, I think he's a fine option quarterback. And on the other side, and the two teams that spotlight that top part of that bracket, Thornton and Sandberg meeting Saturday night in Orland Park in the bottom bracket you are going to see next week Romeoville being moved across on that side and of course we are awaiting word on Moline and Pekin as to who they will play and that's who the Spartans would have to run through if they want to get to that state championship ball game. Well Lincoln Way's got a tough road in 6A against that Naperville North but you know you see Naperville North and Naperville Central you got to be the co-favorites for uh, well one of them never make it out of it they come out of the upper bracket only one's going to make it out but you know, we we talked this year, and people have talked here in the last week about how the uh, the brackets themselves are, you know, kind of questionable as to how they were drawn up. And as we look through some of these brackets here, the one issue that hasn't really come up this year is which class is the strongest class. You know, other years there were maybe some very definitive statements saying, "Oh yeah, 5A is the toughest year," or, or "4A is." Do you have any feelings that way as to which overall uh, class might be the the toughest? You know, I think, and I make a statement about about pairings. You know, and I've and. If you want a state championship, you've got to beat the best teams, and you've got to be lucky. And that's the luck of the draw when you become a state champion. Not only are you good, but you get a lucky draw. For some reason, it's written that you get uh, a team that's uh, 21 and 10 rather than a team that's 31 and 0. <laughs> and a lot of coaches, you know, they started raising cane about geography and whatever. But how would you like to be peaking and take your first game in Rockford, or Rockford going to uh, uh, East Moline? So. Uh, forget all that. You've got to play class-wise and, and, and different division. I think you can find some 3A and 4A teams that have 30 f football players in the team and can play with anybody. You remember, you only put 11. Depth makes a makes a difference, and we play a lot of two-way ball players. Mm -hmm. but look at Romeoville. Romeoville have, has four or five kids that are playing both ways. All right. Well, we are just moments away from resuming here. Of course, the injured player again, once again, was Brian McGarry. Lee gave us the report that uh, he uh, had some sort of a neck injury. He had some tingling in his legs. And of course, uh, they removed him from the field and snapped the ball a couple times here. And I'm sure many of his teammates are going to be following that ambulance up to the hospital. He'll probably have some information again from Dennis Slay of where was the, the ambulance. We normally have him sitting on the track there uh, waiting uh, if an injury occurred. but. This time they may have had a call out, and that's with the delay of, of getting the ambulance here on time. This is a quick time. This is the third time we've been in doing a game at Romeoville here this season, and we'd like to thank everybody involved in Romeoville Athletic Department for their hospitality and uh, making us feel as comfortable as it's humanly possible on nights like this, and we certainly appreciate everybody from top to bottom on that one. And Lee has uh, been down in the field a little bit close there. And Lee, what uh, what's going on now? Well, here's the situation. They're going to take uh, the injured brother rice pro player off an ambulance. And they're waiting for the ambulance to clear the field before they start the ball game up. Uh, talked to the head official, and he said that if the brother rice coach would say yes, that's it, then we'd stop the game right where it's at. If not, then the referees cannot stop the game through the uh, Illinois High School State Association, so they will have to complete this game. Sometimes in circumstances of uh, lightning or something like that, the referees can stop the game because of the safety of the fans. But in this instance, if the brother rice coach said, yeah, we've had enough, then he would stop it, but he hasn't. So what they'll do is let the players warm up a little bit, wait for the ambulance to get off the field, uh, continue this game. And another point here, uh, we had a uh, brother rice fan here who uh, was very very obnoxious, and I'll just say that, um, wouldn't let us do our job. And again, we're not trying to sensationalize anything. Uh, the people at home 
wanted to know about the injured player. We were very concerned about the injured player, just trying to cover it, uh, do our job down here. Back up to you. Okay, thank you very much, Lee, for those reports on the field. So Bill Gleason says, no, let's, uh, let's play on here, and that might give us an indication that maybe he's going to to try to make something happen I, I'd here. I'd be very interested to know the emotions on, on that on the sideline of what's going to happen in this 42 seconds. If I was the referee and, and I'm sitting next to to a referee up here that, uh, that works uh, some of the games that, that I play with, uh, you have to be very, very careful about what's, what's going to happen when this ball is snapped and make sure it's just a good, clean football and not uh, mayhem out there. Seemed like a long time ago when this game started and we talked about our top jocks, our picks for, you know, the top guys in this ball game. And, well, tonight I got the first pick by luck of a draw. I took Jezolowski. That's not a bad pick, is it? No. And your no. pick of Rich Bernowski is certainly a very understanding not pick, right? Bad. Okay. Not bad. Okay. And then somebody just uh, pulled one out of nowhere. Do I keep my five? I, I, re I renege on that. I'm still five. You're still, still five. five. Lee okay. will go to three. Dan Simic has had a great, great <laughs> ball game. Okay, let's wrap it up here. Let's do the final 42 seconds. He's going to throw it. Oh my goodness. He's going to complete it. And we'll get out of bounds <laughs> with 36 seconds left. <laughs> boy, oh boy. What did I say? Remember I said we had, we we're back there, it would take 11 minutes with 122 on the clock. Well, that's you were taking off about by, yeah. 25 minutes, but that was because of the injury. But it might take a little bit of time for this 36 seconds to get off the clock. Brother Rice at the 36 yard line of Romeoville. Matt Kelly is loosening up that arm here in the fourth quarter. He's, he may get sacked. Well, he's going to make it at least out of bounds. Out near the 20. So about a 15-yard pickup for Kelly. And that took nine seconds off the clock. Well, the one thing, you know, you get here on Channel 15, we're giving you a live <laughs> coverage here tonight. The one thing we don't have to do is write a story on this. We don't have to beat any deadlines on this one. <laughs> oh, boy. Kelly looking for another six points here. He trails by 19. Hey, there's a wrestling move out there. That was a great hold by the defensive lineman, offensive lineman. My goodness. He had his arms wrapped around him in a bear hug. This has been a 35-point fourth quarter. Fourth quarter that, honestly, uh, Mac has lasted an hour and 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Scoring tonight opened by Dan Simic's 88-yard touchdown run. Matt Jezolowski from 45 yards out. 12 to nothing at the end of three quarters and touchdown pass to Ryan Taylor, Jezolowski another touchdown run and Simic another. That's Romeoville scoring. Oh, it's touchdown. And Brother Rice will do it. Sam Mathis his second touchdown of the night in the air with 13 seconds left. That will pull Brother Rice a wee bit closer. Well, you know, I, it, this has been a long football game in more ways than one and I think uh, Coach Winky can't wait to get out of this one. Mm -hmm. Well, he's getting ner more nervous and more nervous down there. Nervouser and nervouser, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, the kids are so cold and they, you know, they're not reacting that right now. Right. It's not been a textbook performance no. on uh, prevent defense. They'll go for two. And this score, I and mean, the final score certainly is not going to be any measure of what this game was. Oh, wow. They'll be a yard and a half closer after that encroachment. This was a defensive game. You know, until Simic breaks that 80-yard run, we're looking at a scoreless first half. Right. It's a, it's a reminder of the Bolingbrook game. We Very that, much. You know, DeVille had it socked up, and all of a sudden they're looking back, and they were all tense and excited in the last minute and a half of that game. There's 13 seconds going on, onside kick getting ready to come up. I mean, it hasn't gone 10 yards yet. They've tried it twice, but third time might be the charm. They need a yard and a half to get two points. They'll pretty much give it to him. Wow. I would hate to be in the film room tomorrow morning. Let me tell you. I <laughs> hope Bill has a good cup of coffee and a hot croissant <laughs> and a couple of Tylenols there and let it go. But you know what else he's going to have? He's going to have a win. That's right. And you got to be happy about that. Sure. He's, they played a great game. They've dominated and, Brother uh, Rice tonight. Right. And the kids, are, you know, they may be lackadaisical, but they're kids, and they're, they're cold, and they're wet, and they want to get out of here. And, they, they're, and that's the way they're playing right now in the last five, eight minutes of this game. 
43 point fourth quarter. It yep. is 33-22, Romeoville. And if you want to add some excitement, let Brother Rice recover this onside <laughs> kick and keep the cameras on the guy in the orange and see what happens. Boy, oh boy. I think you may have Jeslowski on that front line. He's, he's got everybody but. Well, hopefully we get an opportunity to grab a player or two from Romeoville. Spartans will move on. Moline or Pekin, their next opponent. You're either going to go Interstate 80 or, I don't know, it depends your preference. 80, if you go to Moline, I'd recommend 55 to 74 if you're going to Pekin. They try a little, something a little bit different, and that's driving the ball out of bounds. It hit the coach. It, it was that Jimmy Badersky it hit? <laughs> hit him right in the head. This has become a Twilight Zone night for me. I don't know about you. <laughs> oh, that's a good place to get hit Jimmy with all the smarts he's got up there. Hey, did I say zone? Did yes, I say zone, did. huh? Yes, you did. Yeah, I just can't get that out of my head. Make sure you join us on the Sports Zone this Wednesday. Again, we've talked about Joe Hendrickson, the editor and publisher of the Prep Gridiron Report. He has a lot of great things to say about Romeoville, Bolingbrook, and all the rest of our area teams. And he'll be around to talk uh, high school football. And this guy, he, he's got his finger on the pulse. I'll tell you that. You'll enjoy this one. All right, what do you say? One snap. And Romeoville will tack on their ninth win. They don't have enough ball players on the field now, or too many ball players. That'd be legal just to put a center out there and a quarterback and snap it and drop it a knee? Well, they, they put a new quarterback in there. Number nine's in there to take this snap. That's Dan Jordan. Oh, come on. Oh, I can see it coming. Yep, exactly. You, should. you can see it coming. Would you call this ending Mac anticlimactic? I would say somewhat. Yeah. I don't. I don't think Brother Rice wants to wants to hang up their uniforms. I mean, those guys <laughs> are gonna take it to the hilt. I mean, they don't want to wash them. They don't want to put them away. Forty-five yard line is where the ball is right now. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> Like winding down. And that will finish it off. 33 22. The final score Romeoville the win. Their first win in the state playoffs since Bill Winkie's first year as head coach here at Romeoville. That was 1988. And let's get down to the field and leave. Thanks, Dave. Coach, uh, very outstanding performance against uh, Brother Rice tonight for your ball club. Well, we came to play and. Uh, Unfortunately, we had to end the game on, a, on, on that note, a kind of a downer situation. We certainly hope the kids are all right. I thought our kids played a great ball game. And on, on both sides of the ball, uh, they got a couple of there at the end that made it look kind of close. But I thought overall, on both sides of the ball, we played extremely well. And uh, we're just glad to get the monkey off our back off that first round. And now we'll, hopefully we can play for a while. Thanks, Coach. Go join your team. Uh, from down here, Coach Bill Winkie, very happy. Of course, he you know, touched on the injury to the Brother Rice player. We hope and pray that he's all right. And let's send it back upstairs. All right, Lee, and I'll tell you what you might want to do. We have about a minute or so. If you can find your buddy, Dan Simic, he got you a win tonight. All righty. <laughs> let's recap the scoring in this one. It started off in the first quarter, and that was when Simic scored from 88 yards out. Jezolowski, a 45-yard touchdown run in the third quarter was 12 to nothing. And then let the onslaught begin. 42 point, 43 points in the fourth quarter. Romeoville, the 11-point win. They will move on and advance in a 6A playoffs. And again, our coverage here on Channel 15 of our future games of the week coverage will be on the zone, the sports zone, live at 6.30 Wednesday night. Joe Hendrickson will be our guest along with highlights and much, much more coming up on the zone. Once again, Lee will not shave until all our area teams <laughs> are gone. For Lee Turnbull and Mac McLaughlin, I'm Dave Bernard. Thanks for joining us tonight, everybody, and we'll see you on The Zone next week on our playoff games.